Ah yes, kingfishers. Today I want to tell you a story about how I saw one of the most beautiful birds in the Netherlands, combined with some interesting footage of them that I got. Will you join me on this adventure today? And since there is a virus outbreak in the Netherlands, I'll be wearing a mask. Oh yeah, let's get this party started. Today I'm meeting a friend. One has to amuse himself in these trying times, you see. Today I'm going to show you some of my country. Are you excited? It's a suburban area though. Here I was waiting for my friend. One and a half a meter. <laughs> this is what the Netherlands looks like. A lot of water, windmills, grasslands and sometimes too many people. It was spring, so we can enjoy seeing many baby birds today. I hope you enjoy it. Even though it is not the typical kind of content that I make. I film a my cringe masker after you guys. This has stoffel vlogs. So so me and my friend walked across Schiedam, a town in the Netherlands. This town is actually somewhat old and its origins trace back to the 13th century. Ze hebben geen tuin, dus ze hebben gewoon planten op straat gezet. Kino. So enjoy some of the atmospherical impressions of Schiedam. Anyways, we were trying to find the park and not the village. And there it is, the park. Even though it's somewhat in the suburbs of Schiedam, one is able to find an interesting selection of animals here, yeah. although we are after one species today, the kingfisher. Now we have our first curiosity, a turtle. Sadly, turtles do not belong in my country. All of them are released or escaped pets. The good news is that while these turtles can survive in the wild for decades, my country is too cold for them to breed. And they usually do not produce nests. Even if they do, the eggs don't hatch in the Dutch climate, which prevents the species from becoming invasive. Still, it's pretty, see, uh, pretty sad to see these introduced pets everywhere. Hi. 
Just some ducklings here in spring. Notice how many baby birds we have in this time of the year. Huh? Nice. And here we have Canadian geese with little goslings. Yet again, this is another introduced species. These geese originate from North America, but were introduced to gardens and parks and are now prolific breeders in Northern Europe. The Dutch suburban landscape has a big problem with species that are exotic, introduced or even invasive, as you can see. Even if they look cute, it's not good news. So keep in mind that me and my friend are looking for the kingfishers. We are close to approaching their nest. Interestingly, these birds are usually ultra shy, but in this area they've grown urbanized. In the wild they don't allow anyone to get close to them, but in the suburbs of this town they have grown a little bit accustomed to humans. And there it is, the Eisvogelmuur, which means kingfisher wall. This wall was built by volunteers to stop curious people from bothering the bird nest. And here we can see the nest. In the Netherlands these birds are somewhat rare. Currently there are estimated to be about 1000 nests in the Netherlands. That doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind that in the past, this species experienced much, much harsher times. For example, in 1997 it was estimated there were only 15 nests of this bird left in the Netherlands. The biggest threat to this species is water quality. These birds' main source of food are fish, which they catch in fresh water sources. Because they are aerial hunters, they spot fish from the sky usually sitting on top of branches that stick out over the water. Once they see a fish, they dive down into the water to catch it. Because of this, the species requires clear waters. In muddy waters, filled with organic materials, materials such as algae, detritus, soil particles or anything else, the water can become dark. Polluted waters are usually not transparent, but dark and muddy. And this stops the kingfisher from being able to see its prey. They need clear, transparent, unpolluted water of good quality in order to spot the fish. Water pollution, which in the Netherlands was mainly because of farmers, has led to the decline of this bird in the past. Farmers in the Netherlands have a tendency to dump a lot of fertilizer in the environment to grow their crops, which leads to eutrophication, eutrophication of the waters. However, since the 90s, the water quality has been steadily improving, which gave this bird new opportunities. While farmers are to blame for most of the pollution in the Netherlands, another limiting factor is winter. Winter in general is devastating to these birds. In some years, over half the population of these birds die in winter. That's because kingfishers struggle to deal with cold temperatures for multiple reasons. The biggest problem, however, is ice. In winter, when the waters freeze, wow. these birds become unable to catch fish. In some cases, the birds become so desperate for food that they try to dive under the ice and freeze or drown in their attempts to eat. Here is one recent example. This kingfisher was found in the Netherlands and frozen in solid ice. Ironically, in Dutch, these birds are called ijsvogels, which means ice birds. Therefore, it was named the ice ice bird, the ice ice vogel, and displayed in the Rotterdam Museum. However, 
This example illustrates one of the many victims in winter. In strong winters, over 80% of all the kingfishers can starve or freeze to death. And they benefit from milder winters. The birds tend to nest in cavities along the side of the water. In this case, they were nesting in the roots of a fallen tree which contained soil um, that was captured between the roots. The nesting birds became such a massive local tourist attraction that the nests were getting disturbed and volunteers took it upon themselves to build a wall that allows people to safely photograph and film them without disturbing them too much. Kingfishers don't only hunt fish, they'll grab anything that moves in the water including frogs, insects, crayfish, tadpoles and even snails. However, its preferred food are definitely small types of fish. Truly remarkable are their colors. With a bright orange stomach and electric blue back, these birds are an impressive sight to see. They're also quite territorial. And that's really what I just wanted to show you today. But I'm surprised to see that you are still watching. Do you care to join us for the rest of our walk? This type of content is different from what I usually make on YouTube. My channel is mainly about insects, but I allow, I allow myself some creativity sometimes. And perhaps we can explore the Dutch landscape together a little bit. Lunchtime. Have you ever wondered why I am so extremely fat? This is why. I should learn to eat more healthy. Oh, and let me introduce you to a frikandelbroodje, a very unhealthy type type of Dutch junk food. No way, did? You're just some epic roadside flowers. That's good. And an insect hotel. If you find snails like these, you know the water quality is great. It's very unfulfilled. I mean, it's like a sort of limb visit. See it? So bizarre. This bridge was a hot spot for fish, it seems. <laughs> How lovely.
it is on the camera. Can you see the pike? These are big predatory fish which are quite well camouflaged but hard to see and even harder to film. And now just some more walks through the very typical Dutch landscape. This is where we This is the Polder Fart and then the other thing is... And here a nice little forest, which was a small hotspot for various butterflies. Can you see them? Vleugels open, see you? Yes. You must here look, but I see the clear. Here, look. See you? It's an Atalanta. Zie je? Dit is aantasting van de wilgehoutvlinder. Uiteindelijk sterven die uh, bomen er ook van. Zie je? Komen ze uit in april of zo? Welke maand? Ja, volgens mij uh, vanaf de lente begint het. Maar ze kunnen het bijna het hele jaar eruit komen. Maar vooral nu het warmer wordt. Dat is wel mooi om te zien. All right, time for more duck junk food. This is called a Mexicano, a spicy fried meat snack. And yes, that is a reference to Mexico because Dutch people associate everything that's spicy with This Mexican. is running on empty <laughs> food to review. Let's go for it. Zeg eens iets kwijtend. Doe eens even een Reddit meme. Ik krijg een miljoen of je hoeft. En dit is wat we call een croquet. Also a traditional Dutch snack. A traditional croquet is made from meat ragu, covered in breadcrumbs and then deep fried. It tastes like creamy deep fried beef broth with a crispy texture and a lot of meat. Google that one for me, please. I'm not an alcoholic, but just for this time, I even treated myself to some beer from Belgium, because why the hell not? Niet laten lachen als ik dat doe. Oh, verschuift. Ja, het is beter. Ah, jawel. 
de sereniteit van Nederland. Onze boreale wereld. Boreale, boreale wereld. Wat nice. Weet je wat dat ziek is? Yo. Cringe. And this more or less brings us back to the end of my day. We spent some time walking around and exploring, but don't expect much wildlife since we are back in the suburbs. Metro, whatever. It's the same technology as the train. You can check in the metro. Snuffel jij ook wel eens aan de bank in de metro? Owen, leg eens uit. Ruik jij wel eens aan stoelen in de metro, Owen? Ja? Je moet er rustig op slaan, dan komt het zo warm. Nice. Dat maakt me gelukkig. Jawel. Kijk hier eens naar onze prachtige infrastructuur. Okay, so this is really typically the work of uh, Ipono Mauta. In Dutch we call it the Spinsel Mod. I'm not sure how you call them in English. But these uh, caterpillars can be very common in suburbs and residential areas. And as you can hear, see here, these guys have absolutely consumed the entire host plant. I'm not even sure what host plant this was. I think maybe it was uh, Euronymus, I don't know. Here you can see some of the larvae, can you see it? Here. See it? Uh, this is actually a micro moth. Wow. 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 Oh my god. Hoe zien die vlinders eruit? Uh, heel klein. Even filmen hoe leeg het is. Het is hier nog geen recht thuiswerken. In Duitsland wel. Voor. Ja. 